Hey there, today's lecture is on alternative formulations of the force and moment balances. So we're going to use, you know, where previously we proved Cauchy's theorem using something akin to, say, Newtonian mechanics, you know, where you're actually <coughs> calculating the force and making equilibrium of force and moment <coughs> um, explicitly. In this section, we're going to basically use energy methods or <coughs> a weak formulation. Uh, and we'll come up with equivalent ways of proving the existence of the Cauchy stress. And we'll come up with the principle of virtual power, which is a very powerful <laughs> concept. Um, and it is really the basis of, on which things like finite element methods and <clears throat> weak solution methods are based. Um, and it's a type of variational approach. Get out of there. Beetle trying to go through bags. Yeesh. All right. So, yeah, what we're doing today is like, uh, it's similar to a Lagrangian or Hamiltonian <clears throat> approach where what we did before was like a Newtonian approach. So in the frame F, the generalized external power expended on the spatial region P by the velocity V goes like this. If I can get the pen. So that's going to be W <coughs> of P and V is equal to the integral over the boundary of P of the surface traction <coughs> dot the velocity integrated over the area plus the integral over the volume of the generalized body force so again, that includes the inertial force dot the velocity dv. <coughs> All right. Well, here, although we're going to remove this stipulation in the principle of virtual power, um, but here, let's stipulate that the surface traction force be frame indifferent. We know that the normal is frame indifferent. So by that, we mean that T star <coughs> of N star is equal to Q times T of N, which is to say that the surface traction force just rotates with the frame. <coughs> Uh, similarly here, we're going to assume that the generalized body force is frame indifferent. In a little bit, we're going to prove that. 
anyway. Uh, let's move this over a little bit. Oop. So we have that b star is equal to q b. All right, well then in the frame f star, the generalized external power is going to look like this. <clears throat> We have that W star, P star, and V star. So this is the same region and the same velocity field, but now viewed from the frame F star. Well, that is equal to the same thing, but now all in our new frame. <coughs> All right, well, we know that V star is equal to Q times V plus Y dot of T plus Q dot of X minus O. <coughs> And um, for notational shortness, we'll call this just R. All right, so then if we look at this term here, we have that uh, T star N star dot V star is equal to Q T N dot Q V plus Y dot plus Q dot R hmm, guess we could have just used parentheses on that one. <coughs> All right, well we can use the transpose here to move this Q over to there with the transpose. So that is equal to T N dot well, Q transpose is Q inverse because Q is a rotation. <coughs> so that's just V. And then plus Q transpose Y dot plus Q transpose Q dot R. where r was defined as x minus o in the f frame. All right, well, q 
is just a function of time. It's not a function of space. It's a <coughs> rotation tensor. So if we say that the vector alpha of t is defined as q <coughs> transpose y dot, and let lambda of t be the axial vector of the skew tensor q transpose q dot. All right, so in that case, then, um, we're going to rearrange this section here a little bit. So now, T star N star dot V star is equal to T of n dot v plus w with w of x and t defined as alpha <coughs> of t plus lambda of t cross x minus o. So w is a rigid velocity field. And we can do the same thing with b star dot v star. So we have b star dot <coughs> v star is equal to q b dot q v plus y dot plus q dot r. Well, that is equal to b dot v plus w. And so what we have then is that in the frame F star, the generalized external power expenditure W star is now equal to the integral over the boundary. <laughs> And because they're just um, a rigid motion from one another, we don't have any change in volume. So this is going to be an integral in the frame f instead of f star. And we're coming up with the values in the frame f star corresponding to those same spatial points. So t n dot v plus w dA plus the integral b dot v plus w dV. All right, well, <coughs> we can take you know, the dot v part and separate that out from the dot w part since this is a linear operation. So when we do that, that is equal to w of p and v in the frame f plus the integral 
over the boundary of t n dot w dA plus the integral over the volume of B dot W dV. Well, this here is the power expended by <coughs> the rigid velocity field W. We had done that a few chapters back, um, and we showed that the power expended by any rigid velocity field has to be zero if the force and moment balance is satisfied. And uh, it's an if and only if. So <coughs> W star P star and D star is equal to W of P and V plus W rigid of P and W with um, W rigid P and W is equal to zero for all P for all W rigid, <coughs> if and only if the force and moment balance are satisfied. So if the force and moment balance are satisfied, then W star is equal to W, which is to say that the generalized external power is frame indifferent if and only if the force and moment balances are satisfied. IFF is going to mean if and only if, <clears throat> rather than write it out a bunch of times. Probably remember from our discussion of chapter, I believe, 19, that the generalized external power is equal to the internal power if force and moment balances are satisfied. <coughs> and so it would follow that the, uh, that the internal power is also frame indifferent if and only if the force and moment balances are satisfied. All right, so that was for the frame indifference of the generalized external power. Now we're going to do something similar, but instead of looking at the generalized external power in terms of the actual velocity field, we'll look at the external, the generalized external power expended by any velocity field, a virtual velocity field. It's like a pretend one. Uh, you might call it a variation in the velocity. And so that is really a form of a variational method or a weak solution. And it turns out to be quite useful. <coughs>
All right, so we're going to replace the velocity with a virtual velocity, v tilde. So we'll use the same notation for it, <clears throat> the conventional external power expended on P by the virtual velocity V tilde is equal to the integral over the boundary of T N dot v tilde dA plus the integral over the volume of the generalized body force, so that includes inertia, uh, b dot v tilde dV. <coughs> and here, we're not going to assume anything about the surface traction. We're not going to assume that it's frame indifferent, uh, nor are we going to assume that B is. We're going to prove that they are. And we're also not assuming Cauchy's hypothesis um, that this takes the form of a tensor. We are, however, going to assume that there is a tensor stress for the internal power. Um, so the internal power is given by some tensor T inner product grad V tilde. And we're going to show that the internal power stress has to be related to this in the sense that uh, it gives you that if you take it to be the Cauchy stress. All right, so the internal power, I think we can squeeze that on here, of P and v tilde <coughs> is equal to the integral over p of t inner product grad v tilde dv. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to show that requiring that virtual power balance be satisfied. In other words, that, oopsies, get rid of that. By requiring that the virtual generalized external power equal the virtual internal power for any smooth virtual velocity, um, we're going to arrive at balance of linear and angular momentum, as well as Cauchy's hypothesis and the symmetry of the Cauchy stress tensor. <clears throat> so it, it's going to show that, you know, virtual power balance is necessary and sufficient for all of those. So an if and only if sort of relationship. That's an ugly one. So this is for all smooth. is necessary and sufficient for pretty much everything that we've proven.
that uh, Cauchy's theorem and T transpose is equal to T. <clears throat> so we don't have to take any of those to be true. We can say that if virtual power balance is satisfied, all of those pop out of it. All right, so let's write those out in, um, well, let's, let's look at this internal power and kind of play a little bit of, well, we're going to be using the divergence theorem, um, but we'll use it kind of a little bit backward. So what we have is that the integral over P of T inner product grad V tilde dv is equal to <clears throat> the integral over the boundary of t woo that's ugly n dot v tilde da minus the integral over the volume div t dot v tilde dv. So that should look pretty familiar. Um, it's a slightly different form than we've usually seen. You know, really this, every other time that we've done it would be over here as a plus. Um, so it would be applying the divergence theorem to that one and then splitting, you know, t transpose v's divergence into two terms. <coughs> All right, well, in light of that, virtual power balance can be written it's the integral over P of div T plus B dot the virtual velocity and then plus the integral over the boundary of t and minus t acting on n that's a hat and not a tilde dot <clears throat> v tilde dA is equal to zero. And this is for all P subsets of the deformed body and for all v tilde smooth. All right, so if we consider a fixed P, um, but the fact that v tilde can be whatever we want, um, it's going to follow that, you know, for fixed P, um, this has to equal zero separately from this equaling zero. Because, you know, if, if V can be whatever we want it to, um, we could make this arbitrarily close to zero by, you know, picking a V on the boundary that has some non-zero value and making it vanish very quickly on the interior. Um, so, you know, like, if this one, well, if this weren't zero everywhere, right, then we could pick the same value of V on the boundary but smoothly send it to zero for the rest of the space. Let's just draw that. Here we go. Um, see if it's come up with an easy way of drawing it. Um, ah, yeah, we'll do it on the interval. All right, so in, in 1D, so the boundary is just these two points. We're talking about this segment. Well, we could, um, you know, one possible 
value of v tilde might be like, you know, here's one. But we could also have All right, and, and so for 1D, the boundary integral is just, of course, the sum of the values at the two endpoints. So you can see that in this case, um, you know, the boundary integral would be the same because V has the same value. So this, this is V tilde. We're not saying anything about div T plus B or TN minus tn. All that I'm saying is that, um, you know, if, if this is not 0, or this is not 0, you know, then the boundary integral part of these two is the same, right, regardless of the volume integral, whereas the volume integral part would be different if this is not equal to 0. And so, you know, if it's summed to zero for this one, um, and these are not zero, then it would not sum to zero for this one. And so that's kind of why it has to, you know, the, the volume integral of something like this and the surface integral <clears throat> of something like this have to go to zero independently of one another. Um, and that is what they're talking about in the fundamental lemma of the calculus of variations a little bit later in this chapter. Um, that's all it is, is that um, calculus of variations tells us variation. I can spell, I swear. Now, this only applies for things that are smooth, because if they can jump all over the place, you can do whatever you want. But things that can jump all over the place arbitrarily aren't typically useful for physics. Um, so we have that the integral over a boundary of f dot v tilde dA plus the integral over a surface of g dot v tilde dv is equal to 0 for all v tilde smooth if and only if f of x is equal to 0 for all x in the boundary and g <coughs> of x is equal to 0 for all x in p. So therefore, combined with the localization theorem, virtual power, power balance is satisfied for all velocity fields v tilde if and only if this is 0 and this is 0, which is to say if and only if balance of linear momentum is satisfied, and if the Cauchy stress does what we proved it had to before. So we say for all p comma for all v tilde, uh, if and only if one div t plus b is equal to zero, and two t and hat is equal to t and hat like that. <coughs> 
All right, so next, if we require that the internal power be frame indifferent, then we're going to get that T is symmetric and frame indifferent. Frame invariant, rather. Scalars, uh, we like to be that way. That's going to imply that T is symmetric and frame indifferent. <clears throat> Cauchy stress, that is. So let's go through that proof. Um, they have that whole, if you look in the book, they have this like phi vector function, which gives you x star from x, and it has an inverse. Um, that's valid. They didn't really use it anywhere else. They were happy to just kind of interchange the integration from p star and p, noting that the volume doesn't change because it's just a rigid motion between the two frames. Um, so we're not going to use that phi star here in this. It's just a more formal argument for why you can change from integrating over p star to integrating over p. Um, so when you look at it in the book, just know that that's why they're doing it. It's not like some huge thing. It's just being nitpicky about the, the change of where you're integrating. All right, so I... P and V tilde. That's the tilde got ironed or something, huh? There we go. Is equal to P T inner product grad V integrated over volume. Let's let L tilde be the spatial gradient of V tilde, just like L is the spatial gradient of V. <clears throat> so when we change frame, um, then we get L tilde star is equal to, because we showed how L transforms under change of frame before, so L tilde is going to go the same way. Q. L tilde Q transpose plus omega under change of frame going from F to F star. And here that's with omega, the skew symmetric tensor is equal to q dot q transpose. <clears throat> All right, so v tilde, the virtual velocity in the new reference frame is equal to q times v tilde in the old reference frame plus y dot, that's a tilde there, plus q x minus o, that's a q dot. All right, so then the internal power in the new frame is equal to the integral over the body in the new frame of that 
T, which we can identify with the Cauchy stress now, since we proved that T acting on N is the <coughs> traction. Um, inner product, grad, V, star, that's the tilde one, dV. All right, well, we showed that that, because we just showed what this V star is, so that's going to be equal to the integral over now the not starred body of the corresponding T star for the X star that corresponds to that point X, and then Q L tilde <coughs> Q transpose plus omega dv. So we can localize the integral. I believe that's um, actually that's that way. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, so this is the integral over the new body, actually. Um, but at any rate, so we can localize that integral because it applies, well, the whole thing, the whole balance of, yeah, the, the virtual power balance is going to apply for any arbitrary P. So localizing. We have that T star colon Q <coughs> L Q transpose. plus T star inner product omega and requiring that it be frame invariant. Yeah, so what we're doing is we're saying that we're going to require the starred one to be equal to the one in the F frame <coughs> for every P and for every, yeah, for, for every P. So that's how we can localize it. Um, that has to equal T in the original frame inner product L tilde. So omega, which is a skew symmetric tensor, is independent of Q. It's related to the time derivative of Q, um, but it can be set independently of Q. You know, you, given a time and a value of Q, you can make the time derivative of Q, whatever you want. It would, you'd be changing what frame F star is going to in the future, but it could be the same frame right then. <clears throat> so we have that, ugh. So basically what that's saying is, um, you know, L tilde and T appears here, L tilde appears here, L tilde doesn't appear here. So, um, you know, and Q doesn't either, but Q's over here. So basically we could pick a different frame that has the same Q, but a different omega, and this would still have to hold. And that can only work if it's got the same you know, if, if we have an F star 1 and an F star 2, 
where they have the same Q, but a different rate of change of Q at a given time. Um, and L would be the same for them. Well, L tilde is the same because it's coming from the same frame F, and we're looking at two different F stars. Then that can only generally be true if this is zero for any skew symmetric tensor omega. <coughs> for where I put that in my notes. All right, and so, so given that, then you have that T is in sim V. Looks like I did it uh, in the opposite order in my notes, but it doesn't really matter because it's two really short proofs. All right. So then the other thing that we have, given that that's zero, um, <clears throat> then we have that T star inner product q l tilde q transpose is equal to t inner product l tilde we can mess around with the left hand side and we get Q transpose T star Q inner product L tilde is equal to T inner product L tilde. That's the you know virtual velocity gradient. All right, so that is only going to work in general if this is equal to this. So Q transpose T star Q is equal to T. We can move the Qs around. So we have T star is equal to Q T Q transpose. So the principle of virtual power is satisfied for all virtual velocity fields if we have the following. This is if and only if uh, one T of N is equal to the Cauchy stress acting on <clears throat> the normal. Two div T plus B is equal to zero and so that's linear momentum balance and angular momentum balance. T transpose is equal to T. Right, so this one is linear momentum balance and this is angular momentum balance. And then three, T star is equal to Q T Q transpose under change of frame, which is to say that the Cauchy stress tensor is frame indifferent. All right, that's all we got for this. Um, we'll do a short one on spatial 
control volume integral stuff. And um, I'd expect you to read the rest of the mechanics section. And we'll start on the thermodynamic section prior tomorrow. All right. Have a good one. Catch you later.